Jackson. And I'm Dylan. And, and this, this is Wacky, Wacky News. News. <laughs> Welcome to Wacky News. My name is Dylan. This is a podcast for kids, about kids, and presented to you by kids. My brother Jackson and I will share neat stories every week for you to discuss with your friends on the school bus, during lunch, or whenever you want. Hey, 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 it's Wednesday, which means it's time for episode 32 of Wacky News. Did you miss us? Jackson, of course they didn't miss us. These are busy kids with very important things to do, especially this time of year. I think they missed us. See, the Wacky News Machine thinks our listeners missed us too. You know a great way to keep in touch with us in between episodes? Having their parents call our parents and scheduling playdates? I don't know, Jackson. That would be a lot of playdates. No, Dylan. They can follow us on social media. That's right. Podcast Playground is on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Podcast Playground, and on Twitter as Pod Playground. We ran out of letters with the Twitter and had to show in Podcast Pod. That's right. Podcast Playground is always posting cool stuff and sharing a lot of wacky news stories that will never make it into our podcast. So be sure to follow, like, subscribe, and do whatever all of those social media sites want you to do. And if you aren't on social media, don't worry. Your parents can follow Podcast Playground and share all the good stuff with you. Speaking of sharing good stuff, are we ever going to get into this episode? Thanks, Wacky News Machine. Let's see what you have for us today. Telltale Dino Tale. Just imagine you're living in the Southeast Asian nation of Myanmar and you're collecting amber to make jewelry. Do, 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 do. Just making pretty jewelry to sell. Just gonna cut this piece of amber into an oval. Do, 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 do. And then. Stop! Don't turn that amber into jewelry! There's a feathered dinosaur tail in there! <laughs> yeah, six days ago, an article was published in Current Biology about researchers finding a piece of amber meant to be turned into a necklace that contained a piece of actual dinosaur tail. The amber hunters who dug up the piece most likely thought that they saw inside of the amber was some sort of plant, which would make it a pretty valuable piece of jewelry. But little did they realize what they thought were plant pieces were actually 99 million year old pale or white feathers on the underside of a tail and chestnut brown feathers on the top of the tail. Okay, these guys are good. I'm looking at a picture of the very piece of amber they found, and I would never guess that that's a piece of dinosaur. That's why they are the experts if you're the fifth grader. Say, what exactly is amber anyway? I know they explain in the Jurassic Park movies, but I mostly just paid attention to people getting eaten by dinosaurs. That sounds about right. Amber is the fossilized resin from ancient forests. Resin is a honey-thick liquid that plants ooze out to defend against insects. In places like Myanmar, it gypped from and oozed down trees, chopping things like seed, leaves, feathers, and insects. Over the time, resin hardened and petrified into a beautiful see-through gold rock. Oh, I get it. And in this case, it happened to harden around the tail of a tiny dinosaur, preserving it perfectly for the paleontologist who found it at the market where the jewelry guy had it. Yes, when Zing Lida saw the piece of amber, which was about the size of a giant apricot, he knew immediately that what it contained was a vertebrate and not a plant. Lucky for him, the trader didn't realize that he had a 1.4-inch piece of a dinosaur tail in his possession, and he sold it to Zing. Looking at these pictures that we are sharing on the show notes on podcastplayground.com, you can see lots of detail. The tail is curved and complete with bones, soft tissue, and feathers. Zing and Ryan McKellar, the article co-author, determined that even though they were feathers, they did not come from a bird. Rather, it was a dinosaur about the size of a sparrow that could fit into the palm of your hand. The dinosaur was a Celarosaur, which is the same type of dinosaur as Tyrannosaurus rex and Velociraptors. This one in particular is a theropod. And this finding is leading researchers to believe many dinosaurs had feathers like this instead of scales. 
We are sharing in the show notes pictures of what these feathered dinosaurs are believed to have looked like. Pretty cool. It sure is. With every new finding, we get closer and closer to knowing what dinosaurs actually looked like versus the images of Godzilla-like creatures most of us have actually grown up knowing. In this case, McKellar believes that the creature would have a whip-like tail like a mouse, but covered with these types of feathers that gives their shapes and colors to birds. X-ray images informed the researchers that the tail did belong to a bird, but rather a two-legged dinosaur. The tail was flexible and the vertebrae were not fused together to make a solid rod like modern birds. We'll have lots of pictures for you in the show notes from this episode. Yeah, this is a super exciting discovery. The evidence for feathered dinosaurs were first found in 1996 when the Chinese paleontologist discovered tiny thread-like impressions in the fossils of a theropod with a long tail and tiny arms. Since then, lots of impressions of feathers have been found. But this one is more than just an impression. The actual original tail is intact, complete with muscles, ligaments, and skin. And now that researchers know where to look and are beginning to gain more access there, it's only a matter of time before they find larger pieces of dinosaurs. It is only a matter of time before we realize that dinosaurs were less scaly, reptile-like, and non-feathered creatures, like in the Jurassic Park movies, and more wimpy and adorable. Thank you for that breaking news, Wacky News Machine. Before we get to some dinosaur-themed wacky jokes, let's talk a little bit about our sponsor. Music for More is a really great charity organization that launched in 2009 with the goal of helping schools that don't have enough money or instruments to offer students a music program. It's hard to believe that some schools don't even have music programs at all. Studies have proven that music helps kids in so many ways. Those ways include being more engaged in school, developing creativity, better SAT scores, increased coordination, and so much more. Music for More collects donated instruments from musicians and gives them to schools in need. They also hold a lot of special events like concerts and things to raise money for schools to improve their music programs. For more information, go to music, the number four, more.com. That's musicformore.com, using just the number four, not spelling it out. And now it's time for... What do you call it when a dinosaur gets in a car accident? A Tyrannosaurus wreck. (laughs) Why did the dinosaur cross the road? Because the chicken hadn't evolved yet. (laughs) Which dinosaur slept all day? The (laughs) dinosaur. What do dinosaurs put on their pizzas? Tomatosaurus. <laughs> what do you call a dinosaur with a southern accent? Tyrannosaurus tex. <laughs> what do you get when you put a bomb and a dinosaur together? Dynamite. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you so much for checking out episode 32 of Wacky News and supporting our efforts. And if you like what we do, please share us with your teachers and friends. And let your teachers know how they can go to podcastplayground.com for information about how they can create a podcast with their class. That's right. There is a link to courses teaching podcasting in the classroom just for teachers. I highly recommend checking it out. We'll see you next week. Bye!